Hey guys, this is Goofer King Science, and I'm very sad to announce that I accidentally killed my turbo pump while trying to hook up my extremely high voltage x ray transformer to my fuse ore system. Also, my voice sounds a little scratchy in this video, it's because I believe I'm hosting some sort of a cold virus. However, I consulted with my white blood cells, and they said they should have the matter resolved within a few days. The problem arose when I accidentally connected my turbo pump to the same ground that I was using for my high voltage transformer. The transformer arced through the windings of the turbo pump, I believe, and now the motor is shorted out and can no longer work. I took it apart and tried to find the problem, but it was just too complex for me to fix, so I unfortunately had to bite the bullet and scrap the turbo pump. Now I've moved on to a different source of high vacuum. So what I have here is an Edwards Diffstack 63mm oil diffusion pump. I picked this up on eBay for a couple hundred dollars, which upon inspection I realize is a very, very low price. With all the added add-ons on this pump, it should have been sold for 500 or more. Just like the turbo, this pump also requires a roughing vacuum. So I'm still using my DV85N Platinum Vacuum Pump from JB Industries. I really like this pump, by the way. I've upgraded it by adding a KF flange that screws on to the intake. So now I can connect the roughing pump to the diffusion pump using metal bellows with KF flanges. This is a much better connection for high vacuum. One of the benefits of using a diffusion pump is the fact that it has absolutely no moving parts. This makes it extremely reliable, unlike the turbo pump, where many things could go wrong. What you do is you fill the base of the diffusion pump with a low vapor pressure oil. There is a heater in the base of the diffusion pump, and it'll heat up and start to boil the oil. Up here on the sides of the diffusion pump, there are some pipes that you run cool water through. This condenses the oil, and while doing this, it traps air and brings it back down to be sucked out by the roughing vacuum. Here's a little diagram that shows you the inside of a diffusion pump. As you can see, there's the electric heater down at the bottom that boils the pump fluid, and there's a series of jets that direct the vapor towards the outside walls of the pump. Water cooling coils then condense that vapor, and we can achieve a very high vacuum. One of the very cool features that this pump came with is this high vacuum isolation valve. It came with this pneumatic actuator for the valve, but since I don't have the correct setup to power this, I just removed it. The valve can be opened and closed, allowing me to isolate the high vacuum inside of the diffusion pump. This is very useful because if the vapor of the oils is exposed to atmospheric pressure, it will burn up. So I can close this isolation valve and then I can take the vacuum chamber off and mess around with the parts without actually breaking the vacuum to the diffusion pump. This allows you to be able to mess around with stuff inside your chamber without having to let the system completely cool down. One of the cons of using a diffusion pump is something called oil backstreaming. This is when oil vapor that is being boiled down at the bottom of the pump backstreams into your vacuum system. This can contaminate things and it can create uh, carbon deposits that are very annoying. So, this pump actually has a feature that prevents that. This diff stack pump has an integrated baffle, which is also water cooled, and it keeps the oil from backstreaming into the chamber. That's one of the really cool features about this pump. Now, the heater for this pump was made in the UK, and because of that, it runs off 240 volts. So, I don't have a 240 volt outlet in my workshop. But what I did do is rig up this little electrical system that grabs two different poles from two different outlets that are 180 degrees out of phase and combines them to make 220 volts. It isn't the safest method, but it does work. So the next step is going to be to build a high vacuum chamber for this. And when I was using my turbo molecular pump, it happened to work out just perfect that my bell jar was the exact same diameter as the turbo pump body. This allowed me to just put it directly on top of it. It doesn't work out like that for this pump, so I'm going to have to actually build a real chamber. So I'll make another video once I get to work on building that chamber. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.